How strong is parallel redundancy when you pull two webbings at the same time to share the load? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highlight. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks, and welcome to a Slack Snap episode where we like to break shit just to see what happens. And in this test, we're going to find out if parallel redundancies makes things stronger for things like space nets or projects where you put up a lot of hammocks on a single high line. Those are unique cases because everyone knows now that if you make the backup line tight, that it's going to suck to walk. But if you're trying to rig a space net, you're more worried about a leg not breaking than you are about the ease of walking a high line on it. So this is pretty normal, assuming you don't have sewing loops on one side. Uh, however, rarely do we tension both webbings evenly, at least today. So we did some tests to find out how strong some parallel redundancies are to see if we could get double the strength before one side would break. Now we've already broken type 18 as a single piece of webbing and it broke 5,350 pounds in the weblock like normal. So now let's find out if we can double that with two strands of type 18 pulling evenly. Okay, we're testing two strands of type 18 evenly tensioned on one weblock on this side, which would be the equivalent of like a space net leg. And this side is uh, in separate weblocks because you can't just line grip two webbings and pull them into one weblock. So we may rig this at GGBY this way in order to get more strength out of our webbing. This stuff breaks around 5,000-ish pounds of force. This actual webbing I've tested on all the other tests. So we will find out if we can get 10,000 pounds of force the way we've rigged it here. Okay, 7750. We did get more strength than just one piece of webbing. This feels very stiff right here and it's very melted. It's where it was in one web lock. Whoa! It bent that pin. Uh, so this web lock has a big diverter right here, so like that's supposed to hold more strength, right? But it bent the pin! <laughs> uh, it doesn't usually break there, but it had a small bend radius. So um, instead of the back of the web lock, which it should be breaking here, not here, um, that's very interesting. So in Rad's defense, their new pro web lock is steel and a big center diverter. So there's a lot of benefits to this. And I definitely uh, tested this in a way that it's not designed for and that's why the pin probably bent. I didn't continue to test this with other web locks because I don't want all my pins to bend. So they are gonna see if they can recreate the problem and solve it, but uh, if you use these like normal, they're perfectly fine and actually a good web lock. So then we redid the test with four web locks to see if we could get the results we wanted. These are tensioned approximately the same. This is a bit shorter. So these broke one at a time. This broke in the back of the web lock like it's supposed to. This one broke behind the web lock. This right here was right there, just like they always do. Um, but one strand of this stuff breaks at, I don't know, 52, 5100 pounds of force. And we've got 8150 uh, with two strands. Since they broke separately, they definitely had different tensions but um, either way they kind of work together I'm sure if you got them more even you can get that to 9,000 pounds of force I don't know if you would get that to actually a full 10,000 pounds of force so in hindsight I wished my two type 18s had an even length especially on a sample that short but we moved on to rads parsec their polyester webbing it has low stretch so I was a little bit more careful when we did the parallel test but check out what happened when we broke a single strand of this. Wow. 
This shit exploded at 7,450 pounds of force. That's pretty damn good. So then we put the parsec in four web locks and pulled two strands as even as possible. Fourteen thousand seven hundred and fifty. That's fourteen thousand. Okay, so here broke in the back of the web lock, shredded like Parsec does. This got super fucked up somehow. Oh, I think it slipped. Okay, that's why it didn't break. But this right here is so crispy. This was definitely in the web lock. You can see. Krispy Kremes right there. This side, super fucked. That's what happens when it slips. It damages the webbing. Um, this right here feels very normal because this was not in the web lock. So we did it. We practically doubled the strength of our test by putting two of these in parallel. Now, if you are going to do something like that for a space net or a hammock project, that's not a backup. Those are just two webbings working together. You would have to add something equivalently as strong, doubled up or whatever, underneath. So that means you're probably gonna have like four lines if you're gonna have a super strong leg. So space nets and hammock lines can get pretty complex other than just making sure you have two webbings to have a strong leg. You have to make sure your anchors are bomber. You have to make sure they're equalized right. And you have to consider what's gonna happen if there was a main failure and in a space net, things would get slack and you may not have as much force on one of the legs, depending on how many people are on it. But in a hammock situation, if you had 18 people on one hammock line and you had a main fail, everyone's gonna shock load the backup parallel redundancies. And so really consider all that before trying to do any complex projects that you see on YouTube. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into rigging space net or hammock lines. Therefore, you shouldn't do any of it.